I dream of a place where I can simply raise my native son to be human, to love music, to make art, to fall in love, to make things he loves with his hands. I want to tell our daughters that I know the source of our internal bruises. I know that a brown girl's pain passes down quietly through our families like hand-me-down heels that don't fit into your girlhood. Okay, you go. All right. Uh, it's a battle. I'm just kidding. Go. King, I know my mom and dad gave me that for a reason, but I just don't know why. When I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to find out, my brain hurts from the pressure. Or I'm a third and having a butler doesn't mean you're a king. If you're a king, you help people. You pick people up when they're falling down. And that's the king, king I, I want, want to be. be. You were how old when you were that? About? Nine. Uh, Nine. I'm Jessica Kiermore, and I'm a poet, I'm an interdisciplinary artist, I'm a curator, um, and a musician. My name is King Moore, I'm 14 years old, and I go to Detroit School of the Arts. So I, I write poems, and I make music with poetry, and I, uh, I write books, I'm an author, and I'm an independent book publisher. I got into poetry when I was around seven years old. Uh, that's when my mom noticed that I was writing, and that's where it started. Poetry kind of came to me. I was writing, much like my son, when I was around seven or eight. Uh, not poems, I was writing short stories. I was a curious child, so I wanted to know about everybody. I wanted to write about my neighbors. And poetry didn't really come into my life in a real way until around 10th or 11th grade in high school, when my drama coach, Susan Story, brought Endozaki Shange, um, who's a very famous poet and playwright, and ended up being one of my mentors in, in real life. Um, into our black box theater. She does a play called For Colored Girls. And I just had never heard poems like that. My mother was an avid reader, and so she gave me books all the time. And so she gave me uh, Alice Walker, Lorraine Hansberry's book, um, To Be Young, Gifted, and Black. So I would come home from school, and I would have books waiting on me. So my mother knew that I was a, uh, I'm a speed reader. I read really fast, especially when I was younger. I could read books just really fast, and my mother is the same way. And she read a lot of memoir and history, historical, not a lot of fiction books in my house. And so I think I fell in love with um, history and politics and people's stories and that helped fuel um, me becoming. What is poetry to you? It's the way that I, um, I see the world, it's the way that I pay my mortgage, it's the way that I feed my family, it's, um, it's freedom. Poetry can be a way to escape or just a way to write how you feel. You know, you take this thing called language that's pushed on you and you twist and turn it and transform it into something that can um, be really beautiful. And um, yeah, it's, I think it's like poetry is freedom, you know, and, it, and it's truth. And, and it's inspirational, like it really is. A, and it's a healing mechanism. Um, poetry heals people. Poems have healed me. Other people's poems um, have helped me get through hard moments. and. And uh, yeah, we need poets, man. Especially now with everything that's happening in the world, I couldn't imagine not having poems. I think I can explain myself better emotionally through poetry than I can just in a regular conversation. What inspires you and what is the process for coming up with poems? Um, everything inspires me. I'm really moved and inspired by my community and my people, uh, our story, our resilience. I don't have a process. I kind of just write how I feel down or a subject that I want to talk about. But I like, I write stories about strangers. Um, a conversation can inspire me. Um, but I'm also an artist that um, has doesn't step away from politics. So if something's happening in the world, um, so I've written my new book, We Want Our Bodies Back. This book is for Sandra Bland. Um, so this book is, deals with police brutality. It deals with um, uh, black women's um, bodies being subjugated. It deals with lots of um, things that happen to girls and, and women and, um, and, and so, you know, I take on hard subject matters that other writers may not, you know, but I write fun poems too, <laughs> um, but my work is, um, has purpose behind it, so I don't just write, make art for art's sake. I have other things I do for art's sake. I, I do collage on canvas, I, you know, I play with uh, things like that just for fun, but my poems, I take my poetry pretty serious and I use it as a, a mechanism um, to be a part of the, the movement for change in this country. 
and I think that's what artists are supposed to do. It makes me feel calm and like soothed. When I just write a poem, I, I feel good. I feel good when I write a poem that I feel good about. Sometimes I write a poem and I'm sad, you know, depending on the poem. Um, but when I finish the poem, and I know I've written a good poem, I'm very happy. I haven't written one in a while. It's like I haven't. I've been writing other things. I've been writing film scripts and writing songs um, as of recent. Um, but I got a, I got a, a couple books I got to finish, um, and so I feel good when I get to the finish line. And when I know, okay, this is a goodie. I know that I, I you know, I, I call a couple of my poetry uh, comrades and I read it to them. I'm like, what you think? He's like, it's a good one. So, you know, um, but I, when I'm not writing, I'm usually not happy. I have to write to be happy. It's, it's, it's balanced. Like some people have to do yoga or go for a run. Um, I need some of those things too, but I have to write um, something. Um, whether it's just journaling or working on a song or something creative um, has to be happening for me to be feel like myself. Have you ever made a poem that you didn't like? Yeah, a lot of poems. I write a lot of poems that I don't like. I've never made a poem that I didn't like. Uh, they never see them. <laughs> no one ever sees them. I just have poems that I didn't release because I didn't think they were good enough. <laughs> They're in my journals. I have like, uh, I mean, literally hundreds of journals from the 90s till now that are filled with poems. You know, it's funny though, like I'll go back to them now though and I'll and I'll see a line or two, I'm like, those are good lines. I was just being hard on myself. So none of it's bad. It's just everything isn't for a book. Everything isn't meant to become a song. So yeah, there's lots of poems that I've written. I'm like, ah, it's all right. You know, and people usually like my work more than I do, to be honest. I'm, I'm a, probably my hardest critic. How many poems have you made and which one is your favorite? I, I have I've written thousands of poems. I don't know, I have no idea how many. I have so many books full of poems. I've been writing poetry since I was in high school and I'm pretty grown up now. <laughs> I think my favorite poem is probably Aliens because it's where I talk about a heavy subject for the first time and I was young still. E easily um, some thousands of poems. And, and I've written poems inside of books and like poems that I never see the I just write them for myself. And I don't share them with everybody. My favorite, I have favorite poems from different time periods, so I don't have like one favorite poem. Um, because you're always growing as a writer, and so my poems that I wrote, like in my first book, The Words Don't Fit In My Mouth, you know, my favorite poem in this book is like Black Statue of Liberty. That's the one I did on the Apollo. But it's not my favorite poem anymore. It's some people, other people's favorite poems, right? Because they, they hold on to that one poem, and they still love this poem that I wrote when I was like 19 or 20 years old. And that's fine. But, you know, um, yeah, they're all different. Alphabet vs. The Ghetto, my favorite poem out of this book is probably Walking Up 158th Street. And I actually turned it into a song on my album, Black Tea. Swim boys, Mexican, Latino, Indian, African, any child in America, wearing Yankees jackets, playing tag, double murder, child stealers, watch them running without worry, laughing with the sunset. So, you know, it depends. And then we want our bodies back because it's my current book. And for Sandra Bland, and um, but it's, it's I don't know, it's one of my favorite books of this book, but it's not. I like other ones, you know, I have love poems in this book. Once I've written them, though, I'm over them, <laughs> and I'm always moving on to the next one. Have you ever gotten emotional over another artist's poem? Yes, absolutely. I've never gotten emotional over another artist's poem, but I've definitely heard some emotional poems before. Yes, uh, Nikki Feeney. It's one of my favorite po contemporary poets. She was reading from her book, it was years ago at Brooklyn Moon Cafe, I was just in my 20s, and I saw her read from her book, uh, Rice, and I cried, and I just cried. Asha Bandeli, who I published, actually, I published her book, um, yes, uh, The Subtle Art of Breathing. She's amazing, she made me cry. Um, Ursula Rucker has made me cry, uh, Sonia Sanchez has made me cry, and Dezaki has made me cry. Poems, poets who are good make me cry. So, yeah, a lot of poets have made me cry. I've cried reading poems. You know, Audre Lorde, and Mary Baraka. I, I open up a book that's so good and I have to just put the book down. You know, like the poem is so good, I'm just like, I'm gonna throw it across the room, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, yes and absolutely. Miss Moore. Which one of King's poems is your favorite? Um, like Ali is my favorite poem of King's. Um, he wrote that, so it's a newer poem. Um, it's not in his first book. And he wrote about his experience of, he dealt with some bullying in school. And so he wrote a poem about Muhammad Ali and the strength of Muhammad Ali and how he had to deal with like real bullies um, in the, in the, from the government to 
all kinds of things in real life, and he attributed that to to his struggle with and having to fight against um, bullying in school. And so I love like Ali, and he's read that in some really amazing spaces too, right? Yeah. King, which one of your mom's poems is your favorite? I don't know the name of it, but yeah. I've always known it from like King, Don't Touch the Cookies. DHS poem number seven. Yeah, I like that probably the best. Or the one where you talk about um, uh, like a, a homeless man and giving him a pizza that we couldn't find. That's Where are the People. Yeah. You like both of those? He's in both of those, by the way, so he's a little biased. But DHS poem, DHS poem number seven um, is one of my favorite poems, too. It's in my book, God is Not an American. It's a real personal piece and about things that, some things I was going through when I first came home when he was just a baby. And then Where Are the People is we got a pizza from a local pizza spot in the Cass Corridor, and it had pepperoni on it, and we don't eat pepperoni, so we tried to find someone to get the pizza to, and we couldn't find anyone. I was like, remember we drove up and down Cash trying to find someone to give a pizza to? We couldn't believe it, because maybe just five, maybe five years ago, we could have found people to give food to in that neighborhood. And um, and so it was hurtful when I came home and I wrote the poem, Where Are the People? Because I was like, well, where where are the people that we, were, that we used to kind of take care of in this neighborhood? And um, that made the neighborhood um, interesting, you know, full of characters and different people. And I think that's what makes the neighborhood great. And so I made a film out of it actually called Where Are the People That's Out Right Now. And it's right where Detroit School of the Arts is located. Um, so it's, yeah, it's something good for, for all folks to watch at DSA. And um, yeah, those are good poems. I thought, what about when you're a woman, when you're brown, when you're brave, when you walk over glass like water? You know it by heart though, because you do it with me, right? What's the next line? You know your eyes are, we feel off your skin for the very first time. Fear is never in style, do you know it? In the mecca of the blue, do it. Fear never is in the gut of the new. You want poems, and I want to, you want poems. I just want to love it. What do you hope your art inspires? Uh, people to make more art and to, see the power of art and I'm sometimes I'm just trying to tell a person's story so I just hope that they connect to it and feel moved in any kind of way um, I'm not I don't have an expectation of the audience um, except to hopefully they feel good or maybe they feel uncomfortable um, but they feel something I probably want my art to like help other people start doing that like just so that maybe another person will hear my poetry and think I'll try that out and they can use poetry as like an outlet too. But you feel the same way about music? Kinda, well yeah, in a different way, but yeah. Do you believe poetry can change the world? Um, I think art can change the world and poets are spectacular, fantastic, dazzling individuals and I know so many of them and I love them dearly and they are energy forces in the universe that can actually move mountains, that we can actually use art um, to feed people's souls in a way that they will be transformed and then we make the world better. And absolutely, it change. I think it can change the world, I think it can change lives, I think it can save people. And I think art is a necessary tool, weapon, survival kit that everybody needs in their homes, in schools, um, in, in institutions and corporations, all need art in order for this world to become better. I think art can change the world if you wanted to. Like, mm. If mm. you yeah. try hard yeah. enough for it to reach people, then you can. People could probably relate to what you say more than you expect. Wait, what's one thing you like to change? I don't know. People's perspectives. I don't know. Do you know? I cannot answer. Yes, you can. Oh, this is like a mommy thing. No. Well, let me just say this. Like during the pandemic, I've been asked as a poet and writer to like, you know, be a voice, right? So people can have empathy and understanding for what's happening to brown, brown and black people. And they use my poems so they can, because I talk about these things and that helps bridge understanding because it builds communication. So now can you think artists can do that with music? You know, like, I mean, artists have done that. Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder. You know, we have artists that have used art for social change. Even artists that you know, like Tyler Kweli and Dave Chappelle and different artists that you've been around that have done that. So. Is there something, is not was one thing that's happening in the world that maybe like, how can we, you could change it? Uh, to remember that art is subjective. Yeah. Like, just because you don't like it mm. doesn't mean it's not art. Mm. I guess. Yeah. yeah. 
that's a that's that's a whole situation. I still hear my brother crying. I can't breathe. So now I'm in the struggle singing. I can't leave. Calling out the violence of these racist police. And we ain't gonna stop till our people are free. We ain't gonna stop till our people are free. We ain't gonna stop till our people are free. How many poems have you made and which one is your favorite? How does that poem make you feel? I think... <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. Why did you... Uh, Keep going. Why did you... Okay. <laughs> King! You, you, we can hear that! Nice work! <laughs> A favorite poem is um, the, the poem you will call Like Ali. And I love Like Ali because it's one of his newer poems. It's not in his first book. Um, he wrote it about his experience. He, he went through, had <laughs> bless you. Should we start it over? You okay. Can. Do you believe poetry? Do you believe poetry can change the world? <laughs> Do I believe poetry can change the world? Do you believe poetry? <laughs> what? I don't know. Who's exactly. got the giggles? Exactly. I don't know. Exactly. Do you believe poetry can change the world? We can just answer the question. Yo, when I said get B-roll footage, this is not what I meant.